guys, a couple of months ago, several of you submitted my name to Pacific Clock Company to be a, one of their official testers. And I got the first prototype in to take a look at. And I figured since you guys recommended me that we'd all work on this one together. This is called the Block Lock uh, Model 7 MA. It's not on their website. And there are no instructions with this thing. So we kind of gonna have to figure out what it's for. There are some oddities about it and on, on first glance. It's kind of a neat lock. It's solid aluminum body. It's anodized. Uh, it weighs 7.8 ounces, so pretty hefty little lock. That's 221 grams of, of aluminum, and we got a steel shackle there, obviously. Um, when we take a close look, we're all interested in the key and the lock itself. So on the bright side, it's got a six-pin lock, uh, and it works very smoothly and it rotates 90 degrees and then the shackle comes out. Now, a couple of things right away. When you rotate it, um, you'll notice that there's a little slot in the side of the lock and there's an inset Allen screw. And this is typical of all disc locks. This is the way that they hold the lock in place. So that retains the lock and keeps you from pulling it all the way out. If we get it picked, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and take that out of there. But the reason I point that out, a lot of people say, well, if I remove that, I've defeated the lock. And that's just not the case. If you take a look at the shackle, right now it's in the unlocked position, and then when you rotate it like that, some you notice it's got some little wings that pop out, that rotate around. Those little wings engage with these two hardened steel pins, and I think you can see them up inside of there. They hang out just enough so that when you rotate this, it snags those wings. So even if you were to remove that screw, you're not going to defeat the lock. So I thought I'd address that just right up front. So these are flush mounted. Uh, there's no way to grab a hold of them and they do not go all the way through the body so we can't punch them all the way through again I think that's probably a good thing okay we've talked about that hole we've talked about those two things let's talk about these guys and this is the oddity at least for me there are four holes on each side and on a close look and you can probably see it better on this side all of the holes are threaded and they're threaded 3 16 of an inch by 32 threads per inch. So if this were the door, you could put the screw in from the back of the door and you could secure the lock to the face of the door. The question is, what would it be securing with a locking bar? So that's the question. A lot of these are used with uh, storefront doors. I've seen them in Europe and, and in South America where the Roladen slide actually it's oriented like that, slides down it engages with the locking shackle or with the uh, hasp and then you drive that in there and it locks the door down. Um, I've also seen these used on motorcycle locks and I don't think that was the intention of this one. Here's why. First of all, notice that this is not perfectly centered. It's offset a little bit on the bottom. So if we were to try to use a chain, and this is the biggest chain I can find that will fit inside of this. It's six tenths of an inch side to side, so kind of narrow. Um, this is a quarter inch chain, so two of them would be a half inch with a little bit of play for flopping around. Let's say we want to slide this in from the top because it is mounted on a door. Well, that's not going to work because you'll see that the chain kind of blocks the locking shackle. So that, or the locking hasp, that's just not going to work. So that means you have to slide it in from this side, but the door is bolted to it, so probably not likely. And here's the other thing I, I took a look at. If you slide that in from that side, say we lock it in from the front and this is the back of the door, you'll notice we're limited here because when I try to put the other end of the chain in there, these two opposing links get in the way. I can't put it in from the same side, which means I'd have to put it in from the opposite side and then lock it. And of course, no way that is anywhere near ideal. So I think the suspicion that this is supposed to be used on a in a, secured to a door and go over a built-in locking hasp. I think that's probably right. Let me cut away and show you what I'm talking about on my own shed. All right, guys, this is kind of the door that I envision this lock being used on. It has a hasp that interlocks between two doors, and unfortunately, it's the wrong size. But the way I would think you would use this lock is it would fit onto the door, and the four screws would go in from the other side into the back of the lock. And then it would keep the lock in place, it wouldn't get lost, and uh, be pretty easy to lock and unlock this door. All right, I think you get the idea how it works. Uh, let's look at a couple of other design characteristics about this thing. Uh, first of all, it is not key retaining. So when you open it, 
you can actually lock it and remove the key and it's locked in the unlocked position. So from a security standpoint, that's probably not such a good thing. I'd prefer to see it uh, key retaining. The other thing I want to look at, again, physical attack. Um, if I were to attack the lock, it seems we could cut it. This is aluminum and it's quite a hefty chunk of aluminum, but we could cut it right through here. And then once that is free, we could rotate this part of the lock off of the, the locking wings of that uh, shackle. So we're going to take a look at that too. I'm going to get a hacksaw and see if we can go through there. Before we do that though, let's go ahead and attack this lock and see just how good the internal lock is. All right guys, let's see what kind of lock they put in here. It is a six pinner and we got to pick it 90 degrees to the right and we'll get an open. Hopefully. All right, let's give it a shot. A lot of floppiness in there. All the way in, light tension. Let's see what the pack lock's got for us. Got a binder on, feels like four. That was three, got a little click on him. Two. No feedback, nothing. There we go. Two again, he'd fallen back down. And check one, he's hiding back there. Okay, that was four, little click, baby click. One's give me some counter rotation. And I got a click, but no false set. Pin two, little counter rotation, single click, but no false set. Trying to figure out if that's warding or if I'm actually getting counter rotation off of feels like two again. I'm gonna pass for now. Let's look at somebody else. There was three, I got a click off of him. Three again. And I got a little bit of fault set now. Gave him two clicks. There's counter rotation on two. Get on there. Well, I can say I am not disappointed in the lock. This thing's given nothing up. I'm trying to figure out if that's warding or if I'm actually getting counter rotation there. It's kind of rotation. Gotta be. Gotta be. Spin two. Okay, that was pin six. Got a little click, a little turn of the core. Pin one, counter rotation. We did get a little bit of a fault set. It's not giving a heck of a lot up. That was pin three. Pin two. All right, definitely serrated and might even be T-pin. Two pops down every single time. Okay, that was pin one. Big, big click on him that time. Get a little frustrated, so use a little more force. Did 
Okay, that was three again. Fellas, this might turn into a whip by. <laughs> Keep this up. The feedback is just so subtle. And it's hard it's so subtle it's hard to tell if I'm on the pin or if I'm rubbing against warding that's causing a counter rotation. I believe that's true counter rotation right there. Let's see if I can get on him. Yeah, that was pin three. Good click on him. There's more counter rotation, very slight on two. And no fault set though. Okay, that was pin three. I touched him again, very slight turn on the core. And there we go. Man, at least it's not a whip by. <laughs> All right. Let me back out of here. This is actually kind of cheating. Let me lock him back up. He, you saw him unlocked. Let me lock him back up and show you something. Um, I was actually kind of cheating. Notice the orientation of this lock. If he were on the door, he probably would not be oriented like that because then when you're looking down, you really couldn't see if that was engaged. It would probably be installed either like that on the door or like that on the door with this point part pointing up so you can see it. That means the lock is going to be upside down. For North American pickers, that's a little bit awkward. For European pickers, this is how you do it. You're completely used to that. But North American pickers, which is probably the biggest market for this lock, might find that just a little bit awkward. All right, let's look at the finish real quick. I did notice a couple of things while I was picking it. Uh, all of the edges on this are chamfered pack lock. You did a good job on that, except right here. I mean, really sharp, unchamfered, and there's one side right here. There's actually a burr. This whole edge is razor sharp, but it's been difficult to see because it's been anodized over. But there's a very sharp edge right there. I probably would make sure before you market this thing, you do a good job of chamfering all the edges. These easily accessible ones are done great. It's just these difficult to access ones that are going to cut people's fingers. That's a cat bite. All right, let me go ahead and let's do some uh, destructive uh, attacks. I have one destructive attack I would like to do, and that's right here. This is the thinnest part of the lock. If I cut right down through there with a hacksaw, if it's soft aluminum, then I can just take this whole piece and I can rotate it, disengage the locking uh, shackle, and just pull it off. And if there were chains or anything, I could easily get access to the door. Let's go ahead and try to cut it and just see how difficult it is. All right, let's give this a shot. I got a pretty new blade on my hacksaw. I'm just gonna go right through the center part of the U. Let's see what happens. All right, let me get another blade. All right, I had a, a fine-toothed blade and the aluminum galled it up really quick. I'm gonna try a coarse blade this time, see if that's any better. Alright, not bad. Let's take a close look at that on the bench. All right, let's take a look at the damage. Uh, cut right through there. Let me show you what happened with the blades. On a fine tooth blade, whatever kind of aluminum it is, it galls up and actually fills up the teeth with pieces of aluminum. Uh, so if using a coarse blade, I didn't have that problem. Got through it, I think it was about 34 seconds if I looked at the tape right. All right, cut right through there. And all we'd have to do, of course, is rotate this and pull it off. All right, these are not gonna be locking up bank faults. The other thing is this is probably going to be bolted to the door, which is going to make this particular attack uh, pretty much impossible. But just in case, uh, I do have some recommendations on this lock. While I'm holding it like this, the first recommendation I think pack lock would be to drill a hole right there, just like you've done with these guys with these hardened steel inserts. Drill a hole down there and insert a piece of hardened steel down the center, and that way some chucklehead like me 
I'm not going to be able to cut through there with a hacksaw. That would really harden that up. I would change nothing on the lock itself. Another thing I would recommend that you consider is this shackle. I would consider centering, moving all, everything up just a little bit to center that shackle. Um, and the reason I say that is because hasps come in a variety of different sizes. Right now you've kind of limited it to the smaller size. If you were to move that shackle up, then you could pretty much fit any kind of shackle, out, any size shackle out there. I think the idea of mounting this to a door greatly increases your security. You can't cut it like that. And it also, since it's upside down, at least in North America, much harder for people to pick. And certainly with all those security pins, I will bust this open, take a look at the guts, and uh, it's not going to be easily picked, guys. I would, on a, a grading scale, I would probably give this an A. We're not going to be locking up any bank faults, but it's a great little lock to lock up a storage locker or a shed. All right, I'm going to catch hell if I don't gut this thing. Okay, if you're interested, let's go ahead and gut this thing. Um, when we turn it, we do get that off, but we have to pull this lock completely out by taking that screw out. And I have a 2.5 millimeter. I did check it earlier, and perfect fit. Slide it right out of there. Okay, we don't need that stuff anymore. All right, what do we got? What do we got? I believe we're going to have to drive out... I think we're going to have to drive out that roll pin. I don't believe, yeah, for sure, that core will not come out of there with the tailpiece roll pinned on there. All right, give me a minute. All right, knock that roll pin out. I did take a look at this thing. Now we got a split tailpiece, and we got some holes in there. Really going to be treacherous to kind of push that out of there. Um, I also noticed when I turn the key, it doesn't come out, but there's another set screw there and it is a see what we got here 1.5 millimeter so he, he apparently locks that in place so i'll back him out that ought to work all right i am going to get a shim because i don't want anything to fall inside of that hole Okay, that'll work. Now I need a follower. The right size follower. And it's a small one for American size lock. All right, let's try this, see what happens. All right, there. There's where that screw locks the uh, core in place so you can't pull it out even with the key. Let's go and start looking at this guy. Standard, standard, standard. Standard. Oh, looks like all standards, guys. All six of them are standards. Uh, not quite, Bill. Number six there. The camera will pick it up. That is the key end, and the other end has a little bit of a T feature on it. And I look down here, and I see that also on pin number three. It might show up a little bit better. And it also has a free dent built in the side of it. But there's that T feature I'm talking about. That would explain some of the touchy, touchiness when we were picking it. All right, we have spool. Serrated. Spool. Serrated. Guess what the next one is. Yep, spool, and the last one, standard, we got off easy, and the springs are right there, alright fellas, there you go, that is the pack lock, block lock 7MA, not a bad lock, if you got any recommendations on improvement, I'm sure pack lock would love to hear it, and I'm going to encourage them to take a look at your comments in the description, appreciate your time guys, stay safe, stay legal.